All right, episode two of the Creep Show Shutter series. I was corrected because I had made a mention that on IMDb they have 13 episodes listed. They still do, mind you. Uh, but someone informed me, in fact a couple people did, that we are only getting six episodes, which means 12 segments, which is a little bit of a shame. But you know what? We're lucky to have gotten anything at all. So, this one has the segments Bad Wolf Down and The Finger. Both of these episodes, or segments were... They were fine. They were good. They were, you know... This show is not blowing me away. This definitely is not living up to the uh, legacy of the first two Creep Show movies, in my opinion. Um... I think that maybe Creepshow 3 was so dreadful and the desire for more Creepshow is maybe making people like this a little bit more than they would have if it was just some other random anthology show. Like imagine if this wasn't a Creepshow show and you got the exact same segments, people would not be blowing this out of proportion like some are. And I'm happy that they are, trust me. I mean. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I hate it. If, if people are having a great time and they love it, fantastic. I just, when I'm looking at some of the reviews, some of my friends, this and that, they're just like, oh my God, I love it. It's just old school and this and that. I'm like, is it though? Is it as great as you're saying? I'm not here to, to tell you you're right or you're wrong, but in my opinion, I think that this is pretty good. I wouldn't even put it in the great area. I would just be like, it's pretty good. There's there's stuff to like. It does kind of feel cheap. That's one of my big issues with the show. I get it. It's, it's a Shutter original. They probably don't have a ton of money to throw around. And it shows. It definitely shows. It's not a horrible thing by any means. I'm just sitting here just bashing it or... I'm sure that's how somebody will take it. It's either all positive and it's the most amazing masterpiece ever or it's a piece of shit and there's no in-between for some people. So if I don't praise every single little bit of it, I, I'm hating it. That's just, I'm sorry, there, there's gray areas. There, there's, there's, uh, there's movies that are tens, nines, eight, seven, six, five, a whole way down. So there's a whole spectrum here. And uh, so this episode with these two segments were good. I liked them. I didn't love them, but I liked them. I liked some interesting ideas for sure. I liked this whole, you know, the whole first episode, spoilers obviously, of uh, Nazi werewolves, you know, well, actually, they're werewolves versus Nazis, should I say. Um, and then the next one with the finger growing into this, like, full moon production creature look like something out of the puppet master movies it looked like a miniature pumpkin head or a uh, freaking xenomorph or something it had it was cool it was a creature effect it kind of looked like it had some cgi it looked like it had some stop motion it had all sorts of different things going on on it but all right let's talk about the first episode i will say this this is another part of why i feel like this is feeling low budget the comic art is not good like, the comic art really kind of bums me out when I see it. It just looks very generic, no style to it at all. Just, I'm not, I'm not impressed at all with the, with the actual, like, comic book animation that they have in it when they're, like, having the panels in the book when they open it up. It don't look good to me at all. Um, also, the creep. I like the look of the creep, but the whole idea of not making him talk which I get it in the first one he didn't and they're going more for the first creep show than they are in the second one because in the second one the creep very much talks um, but in this one he just kind of looks and he's like ah, 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 ah. he just kind of laughs a little bit and then that's it so his segments are very one note like the very little you get from him it's just I, I know exactly what to expect from him there's not any there's not any charm to him there's no character to him it's it's not and that works in a one film anthology like creep show and i feel like that's why in the second one they decided to go with a talking creep because that gives him a little more personality a little more character imagine if there was a, you know imagine if the tales from the crypt show had the crypt keeper come out and just go eh, 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 and then just point to a book and it went to the episode you'd be like 
would he be a memorable character? Would we care? The creeper or the uh, crypt keeper is memorable because he was extremely charismatic and funny with his puns and it's a great character. This guy is just he looks cool for a couple seconds and then he laughs and he does it the next time and he does it the next time and he does it the next he's going to do it in the next episode and the next episode. What is he, What are they going to do with this character? Let's say it runs multiple seasons. He's just going to do the same thing every single time because he's unable to speak. So that's just, I, I feel like I get it because they're trying to stick to the first one. But, <laughs> it, it, okay. This makes it sound like I'm hating the show. I'm not, please. I, I have critiques. It's okay. All right. Um, this one, this this episode, this uh, Bad Wolf Down is so far uh, a stylistically trying more so to be the original creep show than any of the others. The lightings and the backgrounds and all the... Um, you know, lines and stuff around the characters as the, as these big events are happening. Are, ah, and the light comes up behind him and the, the little lines all are. Very creep show. That's great. And I love to see the intense reds and blues and stuff like that. It's something I love so, so much about the original. So it was good to see that. Good to see Jeffrey Combs in here. Always good to have some horror icons in a, in a show like this. Um... And then, so these, these guys, they fight their way into a jail. And then uh, while they're in there, they're trying to figure out what to do. One of them is way too frantic. The other one is a kid. And uh, he freaks out and shoots this woman in a, in a jail cell, which you would think they would understand. She probably is in there of her own accord, seeing as how the keys are in there with her. But, of course, they're not thinking very straight at that moment, which makes sense. It would be a very scary moment to be sitting out there with bombs going off all around you. You've been shot at. Most of the people you know are dead. War is hell. And these guys are just trying to deal with it. Um, one of the guys, the coward guy, if, if I remember, maybe it was the captain guy, but one of them stabs a kid and it ends up being Jeffrey Combs' character's kid and he wants vengeance, so he comes back for them and they find them very easily held up in this jail and they find this uh, the, the guys who are in the jail find this girl who is a werewolf they find out that you know when she's shot at her her wound heals up and she swallows a silver uh, cross that she was trying to kick gro uh, grab off of the kid's neck which I was so confused I was like why is she trying to grab it why did she even make her presence known if uh, if she didn't want them to to find her and then I was like, oh, okay, it makes sense. She's trying to kill herself. She wants to die. She feels like she's done nothing but horrible things and she can't live with that anymore. And so they make a deal with her. Fine, go ahead, but you got to change us first. And then the transformations come and they use the comic book to do the transformations, which for Creepshow I thought was kind of cool. Uh, I thought that was a really cool idea. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of the actual um, artwork, but... I did like those transitions through the pages flipping. So I was a big fan of that. Um, and then we get, this is a rarity. In fact, I don't know anything else like this, but you get three completely different werewolves. You get one that stands straight up, you get one on all fours, and then you get like a wolfman looking one. Like three completely different werewolves in this, uh, which I thought was really, really, really interesting. It was almost like, they were like, the, 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 the producers of the show either had three werewolf costumes laying around and they used them or they brought them three different designs and they were like, which ones do you want to make them look like? And they're like, kind of like them all. How about we just use them all? Fuck it. Like, what do we, who are we to say what werewolves would look like? Would they all look exactly the same or would they have character to them? So I thought that was interesting and they were, they looked so drastically different. And then they go out there and they absolutely, uh, you know, mutilate the Nazis and, and rip them apart, uh, which, yeah, I mean, anytime you're going to see Nazis being killed in a show, fuck yeah, bring it on. And, and the gore was pretty good. It was, it was fun to see some of these kills. Um, it, it pretty, pretty good stuff. And, uh, and then, yeah, they go out and they, they get the coward who abandoned them and locked them in the jail cell. And 
eat him while he's stepped on a mind and blown off one of his legs and his arms. You just need a John Rambo out there like, can't find my fucking arm. We can't find his fucking legs. All right, next up, we got The Finger, and this stars Dizzy from The New Kid or Road Trip or whatever, that, that geeky kid who was popular in these uh, teenage comedies or, or, or late early 20s comedies, whatever, for a little while there. And this one's very fourth wall. But then we find out that he's not really breaking the fourth wall. He's actually speaking to a psychiatrist in a mental hospital at the end. Uh, love the idea of him finding a finger and then it just growing like into three fingers and then into a hand and then into an arm and then into a, I think that's great just to find a piece of something and for it to grow it's not the first time I've ever seen it but you know I don't see it almost ever and it's a really cool concept so I did really like that I thought that a lot of the comedy in this from him because this is mostly like a dark comedy this episode this segment I dug it I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was well delivered. Him constantly closing the door and talking to us about the cops and what he's going to do and then like opening it back up. It was very Zach Morrissey, like pause, hold it, you know, whatever. And I liked that. I thought the comedy was good. I thought the gore was pretty good. He's bringing back parts of uh, these people's bodies who screwed with him, whether it be his ex-wife or a telemarketer or a debt collector, sorry. Um... I thought that that was all fun. I thought the performance from this kid was pretty good. Uh, the, the the little the little he turns into his little pet and he like sleeps out in the freezer, but he can't control him at all. So if you have a grudge with anybody, they're gonna take him down. Uh, I love when he's sitting on the couch and he's eating popcorn and he's like uh, watching soap operas, stuff like that. That absolutely feels like something out of some like full moon type picture or something like a pre hysteria. You know, I just thought, I was like, oh my God, man, what am I watching right now? House 2? You know, have a little baby pterodactyl and a freaking caterpillar dog next? Love that shit, by the way. So I'm fine with it. I just, I thought it was pretty funny. Pretty comical. This whole episode, is, this whole segment is pretty funny. Um, he's just adorable. He's adorable when he's sitting there. Does, I can't see any eyes, though, so he must sniff everything out. I don't know, but he's watching TV and he's eating popcorn. And he names him Bob of all the damn names and uh, yeah Bob goes out and kills and and then at the end when when they find him with all the body parts and he's bashing up heads in the sink and he's breaking them apart Easter egg by the way that I happened to catch just a blink of the eye kind of Easter egg here and it's barely noticeable but I took a picture of it and I put it here up online on my Facebook group but uh, in the freezer where Bob is sleeping is a pint of the stuff yes the larry cohen stuff movie there is a full-on stuff it's, it's like covered in ice so you can barely see it but it's clearly the stuff and i was like oh my god you just can't get enough that's awesome man where's uh, chocolate chip charlie and whatnot anyways uh yeah he ends up in the psychiatric ward and of course we're left to question did bob exist or did he just kill everyone? I know uh, I know some people who are not big fans of the whole was it a was it all in his head? Shout out to Dave Z from the Exploding Heads horror movie podcast. I know he hates that shit, so he would not be a fan of that ending if he thought that that's the way it ended. But anyway, guys, um, yeah, I mean, not a letdown. I don't want it to seem like it's a letdown. This is kind of what I expected. Having watched other shows that they had done, like Dead Wax and stuff, I knew that the budget was going to be a little limited. I knew that I was going to have to look past some stuff. And I'm having a good time. I mean, it, this is a weekly show, and it's something to look forward to. And, and I'm, in, I'm entertained. I'm not blown away. I'm not, like, comparing this to the original two by any means. But I like it. So for all of you typing down there, this guy is fucking hating on the show. Fuck him. That's fine. I mean, say whatever you want. I don't really give a shit, but I have my issues. Adios.